In this project, we evaluated how obesity impacts early and late outcomes in patients who underwent cabbage, focusing more of the conduit selection. My name is Daphne Guneshargi, and I'm a cardiovascular surgeon. Today, I'll be presenting a research study from the Department of Cardiovascular Surgery from Mayo Clinic Rochester. Our research is titled Obesity, the Choice of Conduit Selection, and the Impact on Outcomes of Coronary Artery Bypass Grafting. Obesity has become more common among cabbage patients over time, rising from 30.5% in 1993 to 50.9% in 2010 before stabilizing. In this study, obese patients were younger but had more comorbidities such as hypertension and diabetes. While they received slightly more arterial grafts, the use of bilateral internal memory artery was similar between obese and non-obese group. When we looked at the operative mortality, both unadjusted and adjusted rates didn't differ between the groups. But when the BMI was modeled as a continuous variable and adjustments for other covariates was made, patients with the BMI values outside ranges of 25 to 35 had worse operative mortality. This was illustrated by a nonlinear J-shaped association in A part of the figure shown. The current analysis therefore suggests that the BMI as a continuous nonlinear variable is a better prognosticator for early mortality than the obesity as a binary classification. In the B part of the figure, when BMI was modeled as a continuous variable, the estimated hazard of death compared with the reference level of BMI of 25 increased progressively with increasing BMI values. For the long-term mortality, when we looked at the unadjusted survival curves, they showed no apparent difference between the two groups. However, there was evidence after adjusting for baseline differences in multivariable regression that obese patients had worse long-term survival. Also in this model, the use of multi-arterial grafts was independently associated with better survival, with an incremental benefit with each arterial graft. Compared to no arterial grafts, the hazard ratios were 0.8 for one arterial graft, 0.7 for two, and 0.6 for three or more arterial grafts. After adjusting for baseline variables, the obesity was significantly associated with decreased risk of reoperation for bleeding, increased risk of sternal wound infection, as well as longer hospital stay. Repeating these adjusted analysis with BMI treated as a continuous variable showed similar findings except that the hospital stay was increased for both very obese and lean ranges of BMI. Obesity is a well-known risk factor for sternal wound infections, and reluctance to use more liberally the bilateral internal memory arteries in this group of patients usually stem from the concerns of adding any further risk to an already increased risk of sternal wound infections. In this study, the adjusted risk of sternal wound infection in obese patients was twice as high as in non-obese patients, and when evaluated as a continuous variable, the risk of sternal wound infection increased linearly with the increasing BMI. But we found no evidence between the BMI and obesity for increased risk of infection, suggesting the BMI had roughly the same effect of risk for an obese patient as a non-obese patient. We repeated the interaction analysis with BMI with continuous BMI and the results were the same. As a conclusion, a few takeaways from the study are as follows. The proportion of obese patients undergoing cabbage increased during the study period spanning three decades. For the risk stratification, BMI as a continuous variable was a better prognosticator than obesity as a binary variable. The obese patient did experience worse late risk-adjusted mortality, and this prognosis progressively got worse with the increasing BMI values. The use of arterial grafts offers significant survival benefit independent of obesity and the other risk factors. The increased risk of sternal wound infection with the use of BIMA was not any worse in obese patients than in non-obese patients. We hope that you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mailclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com Mail Proceedings, or journal updates on Facebook, www.facebook.com dot com Mayo Clinic Proceedings. 
You can also follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, available at Mayo Proceedings. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research, published by Elsevier Incorporated. All rights are reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.